I'm I'm also very happy that Arti is there uh, as uh, as as one of your mentors. Uh, Arti is one of uh, our longtime uh, contributing journalists and uh, very very fine environment journalists. Um, and uh, you know it's so nice that she's there. And I don't think you could have got a better person to uh, to help you understand the nuances of. Uh, environment and climate change reporting in uh, from the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. Uh, we at Mongabi India, as you know, has published one of your stories uh, that is uh, by Greta on Longwood Shola. Uh, and uh, I'll come to that later with a with lot of depth. I mean, uh, Greta has done a wonderful job. I'm so happy that uh, one, Arti recommended and two, Greta uh, followed up and did a a story on Longwood Shola and its impact on uh, climate resilience and water availability for Kotagiri and not just Kotagiri, as we will go through the presentation, we realize it's not just for the Nilgiris, is not important just for the people of Nilgiris, but also for uh, plains of peninsular India. But I'm so happy that uh, uh, Greta did this story for us. I'll come to the story, Greta story later. But just to tell you that I've also been working on this, uh, on Nilgiris for some time, I did a much smaller, you know, not, not, uh, not, not, not a, not a deep story like what Greta did, but I did, I did a story on Longwood Shola. So it's not something that uh, I wasn't aware of. And, you know, when Arti mentioned it, I was very happy that somebody is again doing a story on Longwood Shola. This, this, if you can look at the date, it's from the Hindu Business Line newspaper, in uh, 1998, September 1998, so it was the early early stages of uh, of the of uh, uh, long Longwood Shola protection process. I, you know, so uh, you know, I I I, I know what Longwood Shola is, and I'm so happy that uh, Greta could do a story for us. Uh, Neil Gris, uh, uh is your home, so uh, I will not pretend to uh, you know know no more than you. I mean, I, I don't. I'm just an outsider I have a, with, with very deep abiding interest in the Nilgiris. And I've come to the Nilgiris multiple times. I keep coming to the Nilgiris. Uh, Nilgiris was my home for uh, five years. I'll come to that. But so uh, I, uh, I would not uh, dare to, uh, you know, say anything that you're not aware. I mean, you, you're aware of most of the things because you live in, live in the Nilgiris. But what I'll try to do this morning is to uh, link link the Nilgiris to the larger, uh, uh, you know, uh, larger environment of peninsular India, uh, national policies, international policy, international relations, etc. So, so that is where international scientific understanding is. So that is the linkage uh, I'm going to do so that you could add that as part. I mean, after that, you have done such. Uh, deep involved work from your district and from your from your uh, beloved Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. It's my beloved Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve also. Uh, uh, that this will add a that will add another layer to uh, what what you already know. As I said, I have I have had I have had association with Nilgiris for uh, starting in 1970s actually. From 1977 to 1982, I went to a, a school in, in the Nilgiri. So I lived on the Upper Plateau uh, for five years, you know. So, and, and as a journalist, uh, I, have, I have returned multiple times, multiple times to Nilgiris to, to, to write about Nilgiris, um, to study about Nilgiris, to understand about Nilgiris. I have spent long hours, you know, reading up on Nilgiris and, you know, uh, the book on Toras by Tarun, Shol, uh, Tarun Chabra or uh, work done by Hawkins, etc., on, on anthropology of Nilgiri. So uh, it's an area where which I really love. Uh, in 1995, uh, I returned to Nilgiri's when I was work, when I was a young uh, uh, reporter with the Hindu Business Line newspaper, uh, and I returned to Nilgiri's to do a full page uh, story on. Uh, uh, on Nilgiris, uh, the environment of Nilgiris. I mean, how it is uh, giving giving a lot and uh, getting uh, uh, you know less in return. Uh, 
so basically for me the nilgiri biosphere reserve is a place uh, is a place where uh, nature environment livelihoods lives tourism commercial interests all that come together so for me as a journalist it becomes important to understand uh, how this crucible of uh, socio economic activities along with a very fragile but you know uh, an area which can be managed if done properly uh, you know how how all that comes together in the in the new uh, in the nilgiri biosphere reserve so in 2017 when uh, uh, 2016 as you know was a was a drought year uh, 2016 the rains were not good and 2000 the summer was very severe we got good rains in 2017 but but 2016 to 2017 was a was a drought water shortage year and i had done a uh, i'd come again to spend time to do a deep dive on uh, on on the nilgiris to look at how uh, sacred groves and how shola forest uh, have uh, are helping to overcome drought and also give some kind of a climate resilience to the communities you know uh, living uh, besides them you know so this 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 something which i return back to nilgiris to 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 strengthen my understanding on on the work that that was happening and on on how the sacred groves and so i had also got, gone back to longwood shola again but uh, uh, you know close uh, i had gone to a big shola close to your close to where kotagiri is you know and and i had uh, and done other other shola forests etc back with committees and tell a story now uh, you know the the the, the nilgiris that i knew in um, 19 late 1970s early uh, 1980s uh, was different from the nilgiris today you know i mean uh, the environment of nilgiris was uh, different from uh, what 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 it is today so you know primarily i mean i i don't remember uh, those days that uh, 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 we had uh, gors uh, you know uh, on the upper plateau i mean we, I, i don't think we had gors on the upper, or maybe we they they would have been a few but we hardly saw them today you know encountering a gor is like a routine um, uh, is something routine for people of the nilgiris you know so so this is uh, where my uh, 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 where my school is and you can see on the grounds there are uh, three i think seven or eight gors you know uh, in the and this this would have been a this would rarely would have we have in we have never seen something like this while while i was there and and maybe even for decades after that this is a more recent phenomena and uh, uh, arti and and i'm so happy that arti is is with you arti had done this beautiful story a very deep deep down story uh, uh, for us uh, for mongabe india uh, on 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 why the gors have uh, gor habitat had uh, has has enlarged into the upper plateau of the nilgiris so partly climate change and partly the gor population was uh, recovering from a rinder pest attack so uh, you know that that led to an increased uh, uh, population and that that's how it it moved to uh, you can see so much of it in in the nilgiris uh, the upper plateau and and also i mean i remember we never had uh, bonnet macaques i mean we didn't have these uh, bonnet macaques the common monkeys on the i mean we didn't see them in the upper plateau uh, few decades ago and now it's like very common you know you they're there on top of every building they're there uh, asking for food they're, they're there you know uh, wailing tourists etc etc so uh, this these are the things which i remember i mean at a very gross level at a very broad level the kind of uh, 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 memory i have from 40 50 years i also remember that uh, it used to rain uh, much longer throughout the year you know i mean uh, good i think five to six months of the year there would be a, a pitter patter rain all through and i remember it used to be very very cold i mean now when i visit back the upper plateau it's it's i mean it's cold it's very cold during winter months and that's a very short period where where it is really cold i mean temperature temperatures are very low but then normally uh, it's not as cold as what it used to be uh, while i was there for 5 years ago so 
these are uh, gross anecdotal but you know lived experience of uh, of of how the environment has been changing in the league degrees in the past uh, few decades i mean in my lifetime now why are the degrees unique i mean that is something that uh, i i would you know i would like uh, us to think a little bit you know why why are the degrees unique so uh, Nilgiris is this uh, is this mountain block. It's a triangular mountain block. Uh, you can see this in this. It's a triangular mountain block, uh, which actually connects uh, uh, connects the the Western Ghats with the Eastern Ghats. So here, I mean, you stretch from here. It's Vainad and Kodagu, and then it goes northward. It goes, and this side uh, after the Moyar Gorge. If you if you go this side, it's Satyamangalam, and 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 then the continuing uh, uh, east. Eastern Ghats. So, so it is. It is that uh, you know mountain mass which which connects the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats. But more important than that, it is perhaps the largest mountain, uh, uh, largest high altitude plateau. So, if you look at this triangle, triangle which is uh, which is basically Moyar Gorge here, and this is the Bhavani River, and this is this where the Chaliar drains. So, uh, if you look at this. This uh, triangular mountain mass, it is it, it's it's you know uh, from from its base, it's two thousand four hundred square kilometers. Now that's a that's a fairly large chunk of mountain mass, and uh, at least sixty percent sixty percent of that is on the top on the upper plateau, and that is uh, uh, that's more than thousand eight hundred meters. So nowhere else in the Western Ghats or nowhere else in the peninsular peninsular India do you have such a broad piece of land that is at such altitude. I mean, you do have mountains that are this big uh, in the in the high ranges in Idiki district or going towards uh, Kodekanal, no, that, that high ranges and then south of the Palgat Gap, high ranges in Kodekanal, but then those are ridges. So, so it's, it, those are not, not, I mean, it doesn't have such a large area under uh, in, in the, at this altitude. I mean, there are ridges which are about 1,800, 1, uh, you know, 2,500 meters, but then, you know, not not everything is um, this this tall. So even Munar that we talk about is only 1,400 meters uh, high, uh, and it's in a valley, whereas Kunur itself is around 1,800 meters, and uh, Uti is 2,000 meters, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, plus, and, you know, and there are there are places which are 2,200 uh, meters, etc. So, so that's, that's the, that's 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 why it it, it makes uh, 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 makes it unique. So uh, it it also uh, because of this uh, though the though this mountain mass is in uh, is in the tropics, you know, it's in the tropical latitudes. Uh, on the plateau, the, the 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 temperature. I mean the 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 uh, the climate is temperate, not not tropical, and that's because of the altitude. So. So what effectively it does is is uh, the Nilgiris creates, especially the upper plateau creates a what you call a sky island, an island in the sky, which with which which has its very unique uh, biological diversity, which uh, you don't see elsewhere in the peninsular India. You, I mean, the the nearest relatives are in the Himalayas. So, for instance, uh, if you if you were to look Nilgiri Tar, uh, Nilgiri Tar, which you see in the uh, in Mukurti. Uh, uh, a national park and and that that ridge, uh, Nilgiri Tar, the nearest relative is the Himalayan Tar. It's in the Himalayas and and not nowhere else in the uh, in peninsular India. Or if you look at the rhododendron, the Nilgiri rhododendron, the nearest uh, relative for a Nilgiri uh, rhododendron is uh, is the Himalayan rhododendron. You know, which is separated by uh, I don't know how many thousand kilometers in the Himalayas. So so that's that's what. Uh, 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 that's that's what is uh, is is unique about Nilgiris, and also unique is the is the is the Shola uh, uh, grassland uh, ecosystem, uh, which which would have been the uh, the standard feature uh, earlier, I suppose, be before the British came and before the plantations happened. I mean, you would have seen uh, grasslands on top of the plateau, uh, every, everywhere that's exposed, and and in the in the in the valleys. Uh, uh, you would in the groin of the hills in the valleys. You would you there would be these uh, stunted, uh, not as tall as the evergreen forests of the 
uh, closer to plains, but uh, stunted evergreen forests, which uh, with with you know uh, the tree uh, going, you know, is, is all gnarled trees, you know, stunted evergreen forests, but forests that will that that would be would be there uh, all through the year. I mean, which would have leaves all through the year, and this. Uh, the plantations. That's that's what something that's been changing the uh, uh, landscape of the Nilgiris for. And this is these plantations, the eucalyptus, eucalyptus acacia plantations. These are these are what have been introduced in a systematic manner over decades. You know, starting from the British period, but also deep into uh, uh, in, in, into into 70s, 1970s, 80s. 90s, etc. You know, so so this this was and and what was and this is this is the critical part. This is a crucial part of uh, Nilgiri's ecosystem. Every shola had a, had a water stream flowing out, and this water stream. This photo was taken at the peak of summer in 2017. So after one dry year, so where whereas almost every other part uh, part part was dry, this water stream was uh, was flowing. So so these. These water streams flowing and the and the wetlands. So these water streams together. I mean, uh, the people who have uh, who have sort of uh, put the numbers together. There are at least thousand thousand hundred uh, water streams like this in the in the Nile Greece, in this triangular mass and and also in the other parts of the biosphere reserve. And these these streams uh, together join at least from the Nile Greece, They join uh, into four rivers, four major rivers. One is, uh, if we go back to the previous slide, uh, uh, you have four rivers flowing, four big rivers flowing out of Nilgiris. Uh, this this entire southern face is drained by Bhavani, so all the all the streams here flow down to Bhavani, uh, and the northwest northeastern face is drained by the Moyar River, which later comes and joins Bhavani at the Bhavani Sangha Dam. This the western side drained by Chalia, which uh, flows into the Arabian Sea. Near Korikod, and the north western side drained by Kabini, which which flows northwest and then takes a takes a takes a turn takes a takes a U turn and then later comes and joins Kaveri, which is Kaveri, which is coming from again from the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve in Kodagu. So it joins the Kaveri, and and three of these rivers uh, that is except for Chaliar, which flows west, uh, join uh, Bhava, Moyar and Bhavani join to become Bhavani and. Kabini joins the Kaveri and Bhavani and Kabini join the Kaveri. So three out of the four rivers effectively flowing out of this, this triangular mass join, join the Kaveri. So now what is important is in, in this is, uh, I mean, when if when this water, uh, as long as this, these small water streams are flowing, it's not just the question of providing water for, uh, for the people of Nilgiris, for the communities of Nilgiris, but it is also providing water, ensuring that the water flows into Kaveri. And if, if these, these small streams were to dry up, uh, you wouldn't have the flow of water into Kaveri. And Kaveri, uh, as you know, is, is, the, is, is, is the, perhaps the only, I mean, not the only, there are two rivers which are perennial in Tamil Nadu, Kaveri and Tamrapani. All the others are uh, seasonal. They, get, they flow only when, the rain, when, when it rains. So, if Kaveri were to stop flowing, or there would be a there, there would be a problem on the flow of Kaveri, then you know the downstream impact of uh, for for people is 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 phenomenal. It's not just for people in 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 Nilgiris district, but people of Karnataka, people of uh, Tamil Nadu, people of Kerala, you know, peninsula, much of peninsula in India, the impact is so. Uh, and so, in 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 effect, you know the the water bodies in the Nilgiris, especially the 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 uh, the string of water bodies on the western catchment, you know, uh, Kunda, Avalanche, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, they they are uh, uh, they are like the overhead tanks of the of peninsular India. So, I mean, you know what importance overhead tank of water tank has in your own home. So, th these are the overhead tanks uh, uh, for. Uh, for entire peninsula of India. Now, uh, this uh, so socioculturally and uh, and that is that is very important. Socioculturally, also Nil uh, is 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 unique. It's not just environmentally. Socioculturally, it's unique because uh, that I I do not I, I do not know. I mean, I do not certainly. I don't think there's any other place like this in in southern India. I mean, I do not know if in parts of northeast India it's there, but. Uh, certainly in peninsular India, 
there is almost no place where where you have such a strong indigenous uh, uh, you know population uh, uh, strength where indigenous communities which people of the of the Nilgiris who have uh, who have all you know all uh, occupation bands you know so so you have I mean if if you look at just the Nilgiris district you have the the Badagas uh, who primarily uh, settled agriculturists, uh, Todas, the pastoralists, uh, Potas, the artisans, and uh, Kurumbas and Rirulas are both hunter-gatherers and, and settled agriculture. So uh, settled, settled agriculture. And, and you have similar uh, communities in other parts of Nil Greece, uh, uh, in, in the Vainar Plateau, in the Gudalut Plateau, uh, in Kodagu, etc. So that, that is uh, unique to Nil Greece. And also, the Nilgiris uh, has multiple competing, uh, you know, uh, uh, pressures on. Uh, I mean, competing interests on on a, on this mountain mass. So, uh, tourism. Uh, we all know very much about tourism. How how Nilgiris has grown as a tourism center, and now not just Nilgiris, but you know, Wayanad, Kodagu, uh, all these places have grown as tourism centers. So all the entire Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve has grown as a tourism center. So importance of the interest of tourism uh, is very strong. Uh, interest of agriculture, I mean, you know, uh, growing crops, uh, which, which do not grow, I mean, which do not grow as well in the plains, you know, potatoes, carrots, vegetables, horticultural crops, uh, et cetera. The plantation industry, uh, as you know, which came after the, which was introduced by the British after they, moved into the upper plateau in 1822. John Sullivan moved in 1822. And then by around 1850, uh, there were, there were quite, quite substantial areas under uh, tea plantations. And in the lower reaches and in the uh, Wayanad and Kodagu uh, plateaus, uh, coffee plantations. So plantation industry, uh, there's a very strong conservation interest of forests and uh, grasslands, uh, wetlands, uh, wildlife sanctuaries, wildlife presence. So very, very, very strong uh, conservation interest in the Nilgiris. Uh, there are these hydroelectric projects, as I said, these, these are the overhead water tanks and uh, when water flow, flows from the overhead water tanks to the plains, uh, you know, the energy is tapped as a hydroelectric, uh, hydroelectric project. So uh, there's strong interest there. And in, um, in, 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 uh, in Bayanad and uh, uh, you know other uh, the, the uh, other parts of uh, biosphere reserve the very strong quarrying interest quarrying interest stone building materials etc uh, and and all through uh, the nilgiris i mean and all through nilgiri biosphere reserve there is very strong construction pressures you know building of roads building of buildings etc uh, etc et so so a lot of pressures in this in this month. and and it's because of this reason that Nilgiris was uh, declared as the first biosphere reserve in this country. So the whole concept of biosphere is is basically uh, uh, an area which uh, which which has areas for conservation, earmark for conservation, and and areas earmarked for uh, manipulation and ear, earmark for development, etc. So so I mean the, the whole idea is to have uh, uh, development and conservation go hand in hand. So Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve was was the first uh, uh, first uh, biosphere reserve that was declared in 1986, uh, and this is from from my my earlier reporting in in the 1990s. Uh, this is a forest department map, and it shows. I mean, it, I'm sure these 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 uh, uh, categorization may have changed over time, but you know, which are the areas which are which are open to which are core zones where where you know where you have the uh, Mukurti National Park and National Park Wildlife Sanctuary, which are which are manipulation zone zones where you can have forestry and then tourism zones and you know uh, uh, pastoralism plantation zones, etc. So so there this is what the biosphere reserve uh, uh, was uh, is supposed to do. You know supposed to have multiple interests. Now biosphere reserve, just to give you a background, the whole concept of biosphere reserve is biosphere reserve is, is not a legal entity. Entity biosphere reserve does not appear in the Wildlife Protection Act. Biosphere Reserve is a, is a conceptual entity. And 
if you want to conserve some place under the wildlife wildlife tag, then you have to declare it as a wildlife sanctuary or a or a, or a national park. If you want to conserve something under as a reserve forest, then you declare it as a reserve forest under the forest act. But wildlife is not a and and the, and the urban areas are then taken care of by the municipality administration rules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So so that this this all all this is contained in the Nilgiri bias, Biosphere Reserve uh, Plan. Now, uh, what, uh, what, how is, uh, you know, how is climate change? And that's, that's what uh, you have been uh, uh, working on. And how has, how does uh, climate change impact and what is the vulnerability of the Nilgiris or Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve uh, to climate change? I mean, that, that, that I think is, is what perhaps uh, we should spend some time on uh, trying to find out. And, and that is where, uh, a story reported by my colleague uh, Sahana Ghosh uh, has has importance. So Sahana reported a story about uh, about how uh, in the recent years uh, uh, there's been uh, there's been uh, increased number of studies which say which, which have been proving that the Arabian Sea has has been increasing in temperature. That means there have been more heat waves in the Arabian Sea, marine heat waves, heat waves inside the sea uh, over the past decade than compared to previous decades. Now, what does this mean? This means that uh, uh, both the sea surface temperature and that's the surface, the temperature of the water uh, surface of Arabian Sea and the temperature uh, below uh, in the sea, in the depths, have both been increasing over the past few years. Now the sea sub surface temperature has crossed the cyclogenesis point. So that's a point beyond which if you go, then there is possibility of generating cyclones in the sea. So the cyclogenesis point is around 30 degrees centigrade. And on Arabian Sea, uh, uh, the sea surface temperature has crossed this 30 degrees centigrade point which means that there could be more cyclones in the Arabian Sea. So now, uh, just, just uh, get your mind to uh, the southwest and the northeast monsoon. What we see from July onwards, June onwards, the onset of the southwest monsoon, to around December, January, where the northeast monsoon ends. So, so uh, how, how IMD sort of... Uh, does its cutoff is starts from June to September 3rd, June 1st to September 30th, 30th, 30th is the uh, is is the southwest period, southwest monsoon period. October 1st to December 31st is the uh, north northeast monsoon period. So essentially, it's the same monsoon. It, the monsoon rains come from uh, uh, you know start from Indian Ocean and then through Arabian turn turn right, go through Arabian Sea, uh, and then hits the Kerala coast first, and then it goes, travels all the way up to the northeast, turns again because of the Himalayas, turns and moves westwards. Now, uh, the and then when it returns, it takes the same, same path returning. It's called the northeast rainfall, a northeast monsoon, because then, I mean, if it's starting from southwest, uh, when it's returning, it's coming from northeast, so it's called the northeast monsoons. Now, people who have lived in, uh, on the east coast, you know, people who have lived in Chennai or Pondicherry or Kadalur or, you know, any place in the east coast, Nagapatnam, any place on the east coast, you would know that much of the rainfall in the east coast comes from the northeast, northeast monsoon in the, in the later part of the year. But if you look at the pattern of northeast monsoon, it, it, these are basically, there would be periods when there wouldn't be any rainfall. And then there would be a period of intense rainfall, <clears throat> maybe two days, three days of intense rainfall. And then there would be periods where there wouldn't be rainfall. So, so these are basically what we call convectional rainfall, you know, rainfall which are which happen because of need not be cyclones, everything doesn't develop into cyclones, but you know, low pressure systems in the Bay of Bengal. So Bay of Bengal has, has a series of low pressure systems. The Arabian Sea, on the contrary, uh, for the southwest monsoon is more, I mean, historically has been more of steady movement of uh, rain carrying winds. And this steady movement gives you this 
uh, a pattern of steady uh, rains in in Kerala and you know over the western coast, and and that's why you know if if you were to I mean uh, people from Kerala would know that you know you have I mean we have this this entire traditional oral tradition when we talk about Tiruvadra uh, Nyattavela and you know the Nyattavelas and different rains etc. So so that that's what the pattern has been. Now that means it gives you a reliable rainfall. It's not just the question of how much rainfall you get, but when you get it, because that is very important for for your agriculture, and that is that is what is very important for your economic economy. You know, now if this were to this reliability of this rainfall were to uh, you know where, where to end or where to become less, if rainfall were to become less reliable, and you're going to have more of periods of like in the East Coast, periods where you won't have any rain, and then you have a period of lots of rain, you know, 120 millimeters, 150 millimeters of rain, then you're going to have extreme weather events, you know, flooding and you'll have drought. And we have seen that more and more of uh, cyclones and more and more of extreme weather events happening in the Arabian Sea in the past few years. And the prognosis, the scientific prognosis is that these, this is only going to get worse. So, I mean, people of the Nilgiris are aware, you know, the last couple of years, you've had heavy rains and you've had, you know, bridges getting washed away, etc., etc. And now, I, I, I remember the five years I was in the Nilgiris, I was living in the Nilgiris, only one, only once we had heavy rains, and that was in 1979. And otherwise, uh, we didn't have this kind of a heavy rain. We had rains all through the year. So, so we have, you're going to have far more amount of extreme weather events. Now, what is will be the impact of extreme weather events on a mountainous uh, slopey terrain where, you know, more and more areas are uh, getting built upon, more and more roads are being built, you know, more and more slopes are being uh, disturbed, you know. So, so that's, that's going to be a major uh, impact that, that's going to happen in the Nilgiris. And, and because there is less reliability of rainfall, uh, it, it is quite possible that the Shola streams, which till now were perennial, could dry. And, and what when that happens, what happens to the water availability for the, for the people who are living on the, uh, who, who are taking from the Shola stream and, and uh, uh, you know, and, and um, um, downstream, of course, let's not even talk about downstream, but but what, what would happen to the uh, water availability and climate resilience. Now, the other, other point is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I mean, at least the upper plateau of Nilgiris is unique because of because it's a sky island and it, it, uh, it, it, it has a temperate climate while in the tropical latitudes. And if the temperature were to rise, and, and, and we know the temperature is steadily rising, the annual averages are, if it were to rise, then we, uh, uh, that sky island, uh, uh, you know, quality would get lost and, and Nilgiris, the upper plateau will just become like any other part of peninsula of India. So, so the uniqueness of the, of the sky island is, is, is something that's going to get lost. Actually, in addition to all this, and that is that is something which we which we hardly talk about is is uh, is is the issue of aerosols. Uh, now, aerosols, uh, I I do not know. Uh, so, what is aerosol? So, I will like just to give you a simple example. Aerosol is when you when you were to uh, uh, you know uh, use a, use a spray, any kind of spray. So, it it these are small droplets, and and then you have if you have particulate matter, I mean, that means you have uh, smoke particles or, you know, dust particles, then it, it forms another set of aerosols. It, it is, gets suspended in the air. So that's, that's what you, uh, aeros that's what aerosols are. So just to tell you, uh, just to give you, give you this uh, picture, uh, this is from Palakkad Hills, Palakkad Hills. Uh, uh, this is also part of the, the southernmost part of the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve, Palakkad Hills. And uh, south of this is the Palakkad Gap because then for around 30, 35 kilometers, you don't have any hills, many mountains. And then be, south of that is the high ranges, the Anamalai Plateau. So 
you you have this and uh, uh, this this from a place called Mundur. I mean, you know, uh, I, on the way between Palakkad and uh, Manarkad. So I my my grandmother used to I used to live in Palakkad and and because uh, because of that in my childhood I used to come and spend my uh, holidays with my grandma in my grandmother's house. And these mountains are very familiar to me. These Palakkad mountains are are very very familiar to me. But I remember in my childhood we could uh, we could see. I mean that's why I'm talking of seventies, nineteen seventies, nineteen eighties. We could see the we could see the mountains clearly all through the year. Today you could be traveling very close. Like like this is this photo is taken from the Manarkad uh, Palakkad Manarkad road, uh, and I'm I'm reasonably close to the mountain to where from where I took. But there is a haze between me and the mountain. There's a haze, and that haze is almost always constantly there in the air, except when it rains and then so the sun comes out. You know, when it rains and then the sun, sun come, comes out the next day, you can see the mountains clearly. But otherwise, you could be traveling two kilometers away from the mountain and you would not see the mountain. There would be a haze that is separate, separating you from the mountain. Now, that haze is because of suspended particulate matter in the air. I mean, this, this vehicle is exhaust, uh, pollution from uh, industries, pollution from our homes, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so whole combination of factors which, uh, which add to the suspended particulate matter and, and it's there. Now, this is, we have, I mean, we know, I mean, we, because uh, publications from North India report every year talk about suspended particulate matter uh, during the Diwali and the health impacts of that. And, you know, my, my colleague Sahana has done a story of uh, suspended particulate matter, the health, health impact on even unborn fetuses. So we know, we know the linkage there. But what is the linkage of aerosols to, uh, to climate, to, to changing weather patterns or to monsoon or to precipitation? This is an area where still a lot of research needs to be done. But there are early indicators that aerosols are, are going to be a major tipping point in the years to come. You know, point uh, thing which would which would shift the larger global environment. So now, when you have aerosols like this in the Himalayas, it's it's been proved that when you have aerosols with carbon, with soot, etc., and when it goes and uh, when it goes and sticks onto glaciers. Or ice, uh, snow, you know, snow peaks in the snow-covered slopes, because of the black color, it it absorbs more heat, and because because of that, these glaciers and these snow snow uh, slopes melt faster. So you have a greater melting of snow slopes. So it's not just, I mean, it adds to the global warming. It adds to snow snow melt, and and the uh, and and the snow melts off, and you have quicker and more copious flow in the reverse, which could cause a whole set of downstream uh, problems. But in Nilgiris, you know, or, the, or, or, in the, uh, or in the Western Ghats, what impact does this, does aerosols have on, on the forest, on biodiversity, on the water bodies, on, uh, because after all, all these aerosols are going to be blown by the wind and it's going to hit the mountains, you know, so, so what, what impact it has, that's an area where where you you're going to have lots more of discussions, lot more of scientific research in the years to come. So so that's an area which uh, uh, which which is another tipping point for uh, uh, you know for Neil Gries. And and the point is uh, there is a study which uh, which is as yet uh, not published, but uh, but you know there are indications of that. There are prognoses that uh, uh, these aerosols can even lead to the shifting of the monsoon belts towards the south. So now, if the monsoon belt were to shift southward, what will be the impact on, uh, on, on Indian peninsula and on Indian subcontinent? So this, this is another area where, which could grow of importance in the years to come. Coming to how, how this this group, I mean, how you young people, uh, you know, very young, smart, very, very, very active young people 
a young group of 15 of you, how, how your work, you know, how your, how your journalism, how your citizen journalism can, uh, you know, link to this larger climate change issue of your, of the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. Uh, that, that's, that's what I want to end this uh, conversation with. Uh, you are, I mean, I'm so happy that there's so many of you young people volunteered to, uh, uh, to join, you know, to do this, you know, and, and you are part, you're not alone, you're part of a larger, a larger group across the world of young people uh, who, who are, uh, uh, you know, demanding action from uh, global leaders on climate change. I mean, essentially saying that you will be dead and gone. I mean, my, my generation will be dead and gone in a few years. Uh, but your generation would be would be the generation which will have to live through climate change. So, what is my generation doing to prevent climate change? You know, demanding action from people like me, you know, people with grey hair like me. You know, so so you, I am so happy that this small cohort of fifteen of you, bright young people, could are part of this larger uh, uh, larger group that's happening in the young people demanding action in the world. And that's not the only only, uh, only similarity. Uh, you know what she is called. She is called Greta and uh, Greta Thunberg. And, and uh, uh, you also have a Greta in your midst, you know, Greta, Greta who, was, who wrote this story for us, you know, by, uh, uh, on, on Longwood Shola. So I want to end with this. I want to end with, uh, telling you how, you know, and I started by showing you a small story on Longwood Shola that I had done many years ago, 25 years ago, and Greta's story very recently uh, on, on Longwood Shola. And why, you know, uh, Greta's story is, is far more important, far more important that, than any journalism that I can do, you know, I mean, why, why it is important that, uh, People like you have to continue. I mean, from le learning from the lessons that you have learned in the past six months, continue doing what you uh, what you do, because the way you can raise uh, local issues and link it to the larger state level, national and global issues, nobody else can do because you are from the from the local community and and your experience is lived experience. So what? Whatever you talk about, when you talk about water, uh, Longwood Shola keeping the water flowing, I mean, your experience is real. My experience is not lived experience. I mean, I'm looking at it as water that, that's, uh, 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 that, I mean, I'm looking at it as a natural resource, which is flowing. So you're, you have a much deeper uh, sense of responsibility and sense of belongingness when you, when you do this. And when you raise this voice and when, when you have this, uh, you know, when when you have the skills, journalism skills that's given to you, and you raise this this voice, you can you can make the district administration, uh, you know, more responsive. Uh, I mean, if if I write, I'm just another another journalist writing about an environment issue, and here you have a uh, you are from the local communities, and you are writing about 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 uh, about the issue. You can make the district administration more uh, responsive. You can link more to uh, to to uh, to the policymakers in the state, so that means uh, uh, your stories can have more impact uh, and perhaps hopefully raise questions in uh, in Anna Rivalem, uh, or Secretariat in Chennai, Fort Saint George, or even more. I mean, your your stories at the right time can even uh, raise voices in in in. In, in the in the parliament, you know, uh, never be disheartened from disheartened about the fact where you are from. Uh, you know, Neil Greece, I, I don't know. I mean, how many of you know the history? But uh, a case which which went on in Supreme Court for uh, more than uh, at least more than a decade, and and then went into National Green Tribunal, and a case which uh, which which had implications on the forest policy, how forests are managed across the country. I'm not talking about just Neil Greece, 
across the country started when a man from the Nilgiris called T. N. Godavarman Tirmal Pal from Nilambur, uh, you know, filed a writ petition in Supreme Court, and this this became a landmark case starting 1995, and and you know still now there's a high power uh, committee on uh, looking into this uh, called the T. N. Godavarman Tirmal Pal versus the Union of India, and and that that became the voice of that that led to uh, you know changing or introspection of entire forest policy in the country so i mean you have what you can do is like sky is the limit ensure that you keep the sky island going so that the sky is the limit for you and best wishes to all of you and uh, uh, and and of course don't forget uh, forget to read monga bay india you must keep in touch with monga bay india uh, you can uh, subscribe to it by by filing your uh, writing out your email address here, uh, or you can uh, subscribe follow us on any of these social media platform: Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Instagram, in, in, any of them. Thank you very much. I am open to questions. I will stop sharing my screen. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this very insightful uh, session. Um, so our colleague will... Uh, sir, can you hear me? Uh, um, sir, you're muted. Sir, you're muted. Say something, Arti. Say something. Um, sir, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What I'll do is I'll put on earphones so oh. that it can. Give me a second. It can help me hear you clearly. Uh, yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Is it better? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. So thank you so much for this um, very insightful session. Uh, one of our colleagues will uh, translate uh, your, it's it's not possible to translate the entire thing, but at least the gist of it, uh, yeah. um, she'll translate and we'll open the floor for questions. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Arti, I, 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 yes, sir. I, I can answer questions in, Malayalam or Tamil, so uh, need not be inhibited by that. Sure, it, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, so in the Patwarshama in India, Lavanda, or Vindu Bakpani, um, are the community when the seventy nine to eighty two. So, experience so in the uniqueness of the uh important na uh socio culture the important in an area number uh Adivasi communities in the environment low in important other time and the uh cultural important So in the uh, uniqueness of the um, Kandiba and the um, in the uniqueness of the Ipo and the uh, uh, climate change Nala and the uh, Idu uh, uh, damage Agama and Bepri on the Padaka Kuno, Pinto, Solinanga, Aerosols Patikon Solinanga, Aerosols Epi on the 
நம்மளுடைய இந்த ஸ்கை ஐலாண்ட்னு சொல்கிற நீலகிரி பயோஸ்பியர்ஸை வந்து டேமேஜ் பண்ணணும்னு சொல்லியிருந்தாங்க இதெல்லாம் வந்து ரிசர்ச் பண்ணி எப்படி பாதுகாக்கணும் அப்படின்ட்டு கொஞ்சம் வந்து சொல்லியிருந்தாரு ஸோ கடைசியாக முடிக்கும் போது கிரெட்டா அவங்களுடைய இது காமிச்சிருந்தாங்க அவங்களுடைய மோங்கபே ஆர்டிகிள் காமிச்சிருந்தாங்க அது எவ்வளோ இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் அவர் லாங் ஒட் ஷோலை பற்றி நைன்டி எயிட்டில் வந்து எழுதியிருந்தாரு அது வந்து அவர் சொல்லியிருந்தாரு அதை விட இது வந்து இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஏன்னா வந்து இது வந்து ஒரு கம்யூனிட்டி அங்கே வாழ்றவங்க வந்து எழுதியிருக்காங்க ஸோ அவங்க வந்து இன்னும் ரெஸ்பான்சிபிளாக எழுதியிருப்பாங்க இன்னும் வந்து அவங்க வந்து அவங்களுக்கு இன்னும் கனெக்ஷன் இருக்கும் அதை பற்றி எழுதும் போது ஸோ வந்து அது வந்து ரொம்ப இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி அவங்கள வந்து என்கரேஜ் பண்ணாங்க கண்டினியூ பண்ண சொல்லி இந்த வாக்கை ஓ ஓகே இப்போ நாங்கள் கொஸ்டின்ஸ்க்கு ஃப்ளோர் ஓப்பன் பண்ணலாம் உங்களுக்கு கேள்விகள் இருக்கணும் ஆக்சுவலி நிறைய அவங்க பேசியிருக்காங்க நீல்கிரிஸ் பார்த்து தான் நிறைய பேசுனாங்க இன்றைக்கி ஸ்லைட்ஸும் இருந்தது ஃபோட்டோவும் பார்த்துருக்குங்க உங்களோட கருத்துகள் கமெண்ட்ஸ் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் நீங்கள் அவங்ககிட்ட ஷேர் பண்ணலாம் நீங்கள் தமிழ்லேயே கேட்கலாம் அவங்களும் ரெஸ்பான்ஸ் வந்து தமிழ் இல்லை மலையாளத்தில் கொடுப்பாங்க so we have a question sir but it is yeah. uh, from one of our participant who is also like a journalist asha yeah yeah hello hello sir yeah uh, hi asha sorry uh, right in that uh, plateau in the neel gris is uh, unique to that particular uh, climate right yeah uh, so uh, so what do you think will happen to that particular uh, Lorraine Fauna in the event of the temperature going up. The flora and fauna will disappear. I will disappear. I mean the temperate because if the if the the if the temperature is going to increase and and that is already happening if the average temperature is going to increase uh uh then the flora and uh, fauna that off temperate to flora and fauna uh, that's a sky island flora and fauna like i mentioned the 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 rhododendron and the um, and 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 the uh, nilgritar uh, these would disappear these would not be there on the upper plateau any longer you will have uh, flora and fauna which is more on the temp, uh, more of the tropical uh, flora and fauna that that will that will move up to the upper plateau so i mean we are already seeing indications of that with uh, uh with invasive species which are tropical invasive species like lantana moving upward and upward in the over the over the slopes you know so so you'll have more of tropical uh flora and fauna moving into the upper plateau and that's going to change and so that unique envelope that you have uh for neel gris and and the upper part upper reaches of the uh, of 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 the uh, anamale hills that is going to change and that will so change they have no place to migrate to right because there is no other uh, yeah. yeah i mean uh, i mean there there there, there have been enough studies in uh, on the himalayas where because himalayas give you lot more scope for upward mobility so there have been enough studies in the himalayas on how uh, biodiversity envelopes you know that is uh, uh, a whole of uh, uh, of i mean like a particular let's say let's say between 1000 meters and 2000 meters you see particular kinds of particular species of plants and animals how these have been mo- consistently moving upward so if the lower boundary of that was 1000 meters uh, now it would become 1100 meters and the up- if the upper boundary was 2000 meters it would become 2100 meters so so that that envelopes moving up uh, is is has been studied and seen and studied in the himalayas but unfortunately in uh, in western ghats i mean especially the upper plateau you can't go any, anywhere above that so so i mean if the temperature becomes too too warm beyond the point where these plants and animals can sustain then they may they may leave the i mean or you will have a decline in their population over generations and after some time the population will get decimated thank you sir. 
Agent trainees. Data. Article or Laura Kelly Leo. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from Swapana, who's from Vainar. Yeah. Malayal Choi Chota. Uh, okay. so, sir, is socio economic culture in the world? So, climate change is an economic factor. Climate change is a climate change. I mean, we have to economics. We have to do our economics. We have to do our economics. We have to do our economics. We have to do where up on the globe, Sarkaram, pipe put to Ternam, a lingle, Namkuverna, Valangorim, Valangorim, but Namkudur take a pondi verum Valang collecti and eater. About other number economics in the Badiki and Namula Namkatre, Samem, Namulit Vera, Jolici, Patirna Samem, other than basically, I mean, if you are living in the your livelihoods. Uh, are, are, you know, your poor person living in, and your livelihoods are dependent. Apa nam katre samay na mada joli na joli chhi yanda nam ko varo vala vala badi kya mondi veer. No, apa apa social economic side to nam ko vala reya diem vityasam veer. Peri, idhigal maarubo po, na mada ecosystems maarubo. Na mala adnoor an anibandhe chetla ida ch na mada joli yana na mala chidi rna chala. Our Jolie no good the assembly. Now, Kapo fuel would do Tamash Maidigam. In the end, the Rachel Adinella with the assam economics, the way of number of climate change where to go. And and over a period of time, Namka natural Namale sustained it in the natural resource Iliana Ubo Namka Chalpa, Stalam would to Ponti Vedum. Namkuvaras Taltiki Pondi. Namapo Christian Krishichi the Taji, which is natural Namka Krishichi and Betania, temperature Kudi or no, Mara eraticate up in the Mak Krishichi and Betania, Namka Krishi would end the road stage at Rimbo, Namka Krishina, Idakatilla, Givikala Padangatilla, Pamka, Budandi Vira, Bumi, Vitatu Namka Tartupo to Plainsilla, where on a labor or Lingvalas of Julia at the end of it. Above labor. Uh, labor and Krishi productivity Korean Chal, Al Kirk Mari Pondi. Economic impacts are other than a lie the lum Karnam better than economic impacts. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, we have one more question from our EGN trainee Umarul, again from Vainad. Hi, hey, sir. Hi. Hey. Hey. Climate related on the real and the journalist related title question. A po e mainstream media snakarum, Namla, Amukaparan, and the writing Lala, Namla articles, okay, independent IT, independent journalist and Alan or no, po independent IT chamberum, number article, Ipo, Mongbek, Ialum, Pirica, Adwalt, website, Yelka, the Rimbo, the initial, the publisher, you do. Apo Namukaran Lang in Porte direct IT at Tangayan, Ade, Ipo end the story on Alumyan, Ribashe, the Tana, Adipu Mongubek, but two Lengili, Elengili, Pirica, the publisher, but Lengili, Ade Tizian Sheshane, Ade publisher in Lopo, Adum independent on the Paramat Lalo, full light of the independent journalists on the Lalo. Apo Enginian Parian and Lagaring, Kritiaiti, Samothlekamaki, Publishia, but tellingly, Samothlekamaki, and the learning show. Lenyam, Yamparnia, independent Avadam, independent, I mean, Namka, Namka mainstream mediator, mainstream mediator reach you and some mainstream mediator could a Jolici and develop. But a mainstream media language, a pomerul or the Alingi Greta, the language in Amala language in Amala Kotchaburi in the Polish in the Editi in the Chalum Greta, the other day, our Ulkola Yanel the Baulkol and Davila. Upon our Ulkola, Alingumarul, Vianan Petit Dumbo, uh, 
ക്വാറി ക്വാറിങ്ങിനെ പറ്റിയിട്ടുള്ള അവിടെ അവിടെ ക്വാറിങ്ങിനെ പറ്റിയിട്ട് ഉമറുൽ എഴുതുമ്പോ ഉമറുളിന്റെ ആ ഉള്ളിൽ തട്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ആ ലിവ്ഡ് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ഉമറുൾ എഴുതുന്നത് ലാംഗ്വേജ് എന്തോ ആയിക്കോട്ടെ ലാംഗ്വേജിൽ നമുക്ക് കുറച്ച് കറക്ഷൻസ് എഡിറ്റേഴ്സ് വരുത്തി എന്ന് വരും പക്ഷെ ആ ഒരു ഉൾക്കൊള്ളല് പുറമേനുള്ള ഒരാൾക്ക് കിട്ടില്ല അപ്പൊ അതാണ് അതാണ് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞത് നിങ്ങൾ നിങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യുമ്പോ അവിടെ തന്നെ അവിടെ താമസിക്കുന്ന ആൾക്കാർ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അതും യങ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആൾക്കാർ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അതിന്റെ ഒരു ഇമ്പാക്ട് പുറമേയുള്ള ജേർണലിസത്തിന് കിട്ടില്ല പുറമേയുള്ള ജേർണലിസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ കിട്ടില്ല പക്ഷെ അത് മാത്രല്ല ഇന്നത്തെ കാലത്ത് ഉമറുളുടെ ജനറേഷൻ എന്റെ ജനറേഷനെക്കാട്ടൊക്കെ വളരെ വളരെയധികം അഡ്വാൻസ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ജനറേഷൻ ആണ് നമ്മുടെ ജനറേഷനിൽ എന്റെ ജനറേഷനിലൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ എന്തെങ്കിലും പറയണം വെച്ചാൽ ഹിന്ദുവിന് ഹിന്ദുവിന് എഴുതി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ത്യൻ എക്സ്പ്രസ്ന് എഴുതി ഇന്ത്യൻ എക്സ്പ്രസ് പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തില്ല വെച്ചാൽ പിന്നെ നമുക്കൊന്നും ചെയ്യാനില്ല വേറെ ഒന്നും ഇല്ല നമ്മുടെ മുമ്പില് അവന്യൂസ് ഒന്നും ഇല്ല പക്ഷെ ഇന്ന് യു ക്യാൻ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് യൂട്യൂബ് ചാനൽ ഉമറുള്ള ഒരു യൂട്യൂബ് ചാനൽ വയനാട് വയനാട് ലൈഫ് നാട്ടൊരു യു ക്യാൻ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് യൂട്യൂബ് ചാനൽ and after some time when you then more and more people get uh, uh, you know hooked on to your channel avartha vayanadulta lived life vayanadulta environment ne petti or channel thodangite adhi aalkar kaanan thodumbo you will get you will start start earning some money i mean is that money enough for you to live or not enki arigilla ad enki parayanulla adilla but you will you will make uh, money to Uh, you know you will start making money i mean kinorl and then there's this one video which uh, my wife sees very often kinorl himachal pradesh like kinorl kinorl is like very high part of himachal pradesh uh, kinorl district lo oru stree inda she she keeps doing it videos on uh, kinorl life and how uh, life has changed in kinorl etc etc and a lot of people who watch her so I mean, you can use the fact that you're living in in a place where uh you know where from where the experience is yours umarulde uh, experience matra etla sta pala vidathilum adu communicate cheyam ellam freelance avanam freelance aanachalum freelance aite eldam allengi umarulnu poyittu newspaper lo allengi tv channel lo chernatte ingantha story gal cheyam adellande thanne independent aitum cheyam nalla scope undu innatha kaalathe panda ആ സ്കോപ്പ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല അപ്പൊ നിങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ആ ഒരു നിങ്ങളുടെ ലിഫ്റ്റ് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ഉണ്ടല്ലോ അത് പുറമെ നിന്ന് വരുന്ന ജേർണലിസ്റ്റിന് കിട്ടാനുള്ള സാധ്യതയില്ല ഹലോ സാർ സുമയ്യ ഫ്രം വയനാട് സാർ ഇപ്പൊ മോങ്കബൈ പോലെയുള്ള ഫീൽഡിൽ കയറിയപ്പോ കേരളയില് സ്റ്റോറി ചെയ്തിരുന്ന ടൈമിൽ ഇപ്പൊ കേരള മീൻസ് എന്ത് ചെയ്യാണെങ്കിലും പൊളിറ്റിക്ക പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ ഇഷ്യൂ എങ്ങനെയാൽ നമുക്കൊരു ഒരു പ്രഷർ ഉണ്ടാവുമല്ലോ അപ്പൊ സാറിന് നീലഗിരിനെ വെച്ച് നോക്കുമ്പോ നമ്മൾ കേരളത്തിലോട്ട് വന്ന ടൈമിൽ എന്ന് പ്രൊജക്ട് എന്തേ ചെയ്തിരുന്നപ്പോ അങ്ങനെ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുമോ ഷോർട്ട് ആയിട്ട് എനിക്ക് പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ഞാൻ ചെയ്യണ സ്റ്റോറിയിൽ ഒരു പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് വന്നോ ചോദിച്ചാൽ വന്നിട്ടില്ല പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ എന്താ വെച്ചാൽ ഇത് നമ്മൾ പറയണ എൻവയറമെന്റിന്റെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവർക്കും എല്ലാവർക്കും വേണ്ട കാര്യമാണ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ആരും ഓപ്പൺ ആയിട്ട് നമുക്ക് പരിസ്ഥിതിനെ കൺസേർവ് ചെയ്യ ചെയ്യണ്ടെന്ന് ആരും പറയില്ല അപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെ ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് എനിക്ക് വന്നിട്ടില്ല എന്റെ റിപ്പോർട്ടിങ്ങില് എല്ലാവരും ഓപ്പൺ ആയിട്ട് പരിസ്ഥിതിയെ കൺസേർവ് ചെയ്യണം എന്നേ പറയുള്ളൂ പിന്നെ അഫ്കോഴ്സ് അവർ ചെയ്യണ കാര്യങ്ങൾ പരിസ്ഥിതിയെ കൺസേർവ് ചെയ്യേണ്ട ആവണം എന്നില്ല പക്ഷെ ഓപ്പൺ ആയിട്ട് പരിസ്ഥിതി കൺസേർവ് ചെയ്യണ്ട എന്ന് ആരും പറയില്ല അങ്ങനെ ആരും ഓപ്പൺ ആയിട്ട് പറയില്ല രാഷ്ട്രീയക്കാരും പറയില്ല ബിസിനസ് ഹൗസസും പറയില്ല മറ്റേ ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റും പറയില്ല പക്ഷെ ഞാൻ ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് പറയാം ഞാൻ ആ നയൻറ്റീൻ നയൻറ്റി ഫൈവില് ഫുൾ പേജ് കൺസർവേഷനെ പറ്റിയിട്ടൊരു സ്റ്റോറി ചെയ്തു എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഞാനൊരു ഇത് കാണിച്ചിരുന്നല്ലോ നീൽഗ്രീസിന്റെ ഇൻ ഡെപ്ത് കവറേജ് അന്ന് ഞാൻ ചെയ്തപ്പോ അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ ഞാൻ ബിസിനസ് ലൈനിൽ അത് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞതിന് ശേഷം small tea planters growers association nu arnittu so essentially it's a it was a badaga body uh, more because most of the small tree growers were uh, from the badaga community anganthe uh, oru group letters to the editor nu ezhuditu parnu this 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 journalist uh, is talking only about conservation nammada livelihoods ne petti parayanilla nu arnittu oru oru complaint ezhuthirunnu 
ലെറ്റർ പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തു അങ്ങനെയാണല്ലോ എല്ലാ ലെറ്ററും വരുന്നത് നമുക്ക് പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്യണം അപ്പൊ ആ ലെറ്റർ പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തു എന്റെ 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 അടുത്ത് ചോദിച്ചു എന്റെ അടുത്ത് എഡിറ്റർ ചോദിച്ചു എന്തെങ്കിലും തിരിച്ചു പറയാനുണ്ടോ റിജോയിൻഡർ പറയാനുണ്ടോ അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു എനിക്ക് പറയാനൊന്നുമില്ല ഇറ്റ്സ് എ മാറ്റർ ഓഫ് ഒപ്പീനിയൻ അല്ലേ അതിലിപ്പോ എന്താ നമുക്ക് അതിൽ അങ്ങോട്ട് 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 പറയണം അങ്ങോട്ട് ഈ എൻവയോൺമെന്റ് കൺസേർവ് ചെയ്യണ കാരണം ലൈവ്ലിഹുഡ്സിന് പ്രോബ്ലം ഉണ്ടോ എന്ന് അങ്ങോട്ട് പറയാണ് വെച്ചാൽ അങ്ങോട്ട് വ്യൂ പോയിന്റ് ആയിട്ട് എനിക്ക് തർക്കിക്കാൻ എന്താ ഉള്ളത് അങ്ങോർക്കല്ല അങ്ങോട്ട് വ്യൂ പോയിന്റ് അറിയ അപ്പൊ എനിക്ക് തിരിച്ചു പറയാനൊന്നുമില്ല അങ്ങോട്ട് അങ്ങോട്ട് എഴുത്ത് പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തോളൂ കൗണ്ടർ വ്യൂസ് എപ്പോഴും ഉണ്ടാവുമല്ലോ എന്ത് നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യാൻ ചെല്ലോ അതിനൊരു തർക്കം ഉണ്ടാവുമല്ലോ വേറെ ആള് വേറെ ആൾക്കിന്റെ വ്യൂ പോയിന്റ് അത് ചേരി ചേരില്ല അപ്പൊ ആ തർക്കം പറഞ്ഞു അവര് അങ്ങനെ നമ്മൾ പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തു അല്ലാണ്ട് എനിക്ക് പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ഒരു 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 ത്രെറ്റോ അങ്ങനെ ഇതുവരെ അങ്ങനെ വന്നിട്ടില്ല ചെല്ല അങ്ങനെ അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു അങ്ങനത്തെ വന്നിട്ടില്ല പക്ഷെ വരാനുള്ള സാധ്യത ഇല്ല എന്ന് ഞാൻ പറയുന്നില്ല അങ്ങനെ വരുമ്പോ അപ്പോ അപ്പോ അത് അങ്ങനെ അത് എന്താ ത്രെറ്റ് വെച്ചാൽ അത് ആ സമയത്ത് ഡീൽ ചെയ്യേണ്ടി വരും എന്താ അതിന്റെ ത്രെറ്റ് അല്ല എന്താ ചോദിക്കാൻ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് വല്ല സ്പെസിഫിക് കാരണമുണ്ടോ വല്ല സ്പെസിഫിക് ത്രെറ്റ് ഇട്ടുണ്ട് വെച്ചാൽ പിന്നെ ദൻ വി കെൻ ഡിസ്കസ് ദാറ്റ് ആൻഡ് സി ഹൗ ദാറ്റ് കാൻ ബി ഡെൽറ്റ് ഹലോ അത് വയനാടായതുകൊണ്ട് അത് വല്യ പ്രശ്നമായിട്ട് തന്നെ തോന്നുന്നുണ്ട് കാരണം ഇപ്പോ വയനാട്ടില് വല്ലാണ്ട് ഈ ഹ്യൂമൻ ആനിമൽ കോൺഫ്ലിക്ട് ഒക്കെ നടക്കുന്നുണ്ട് പിന്നെ ആന കടുവ അതൊക്കെ നാട്ടിലേക്ക് ഇറങ്ങുകയാണ് പക്ഷെ അതിന്റെ ഒക്കെ കാരണം കോറി അതൊക്കെ അങ്ങനെ ഉണ്ട് പക്ഷെ അതിന്റെ ഒക്കെ കാരണം നമ്മള് ഒരു ആർട്ടിക്കൾ ആയിട്ട് ചെയ്യുമ്പോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇപ്പൊ മെയിൻ സ്ട്രീം മീഡിയസ് ഒക്കെ ഈ കാടിനെയും മറ്റേ മൃഗങ്ങളെയൊക്കെയാണ് കുറ്റം പറയുന്നത് അപ്പൊ അതിന്റെ ഇടയിൽ നിന്നിട്ട് നമുക്ക് ഇതിനെ സപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്തിട്ട് ഒരു ആർട്ടിക്കിൾ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ എന്തെങ്കിലും പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്യാൻ നോക്കുമ്പോൾ അത് വലിയൊരു ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടായിട്ട് തന്നെ തോന്നും കാരണം കാരണം മനുഷ്യർ തന്നെയാണെങ്കിലും ഇതിന്റെ ഇതിന്റെ ഒക്കെ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ട് അനുഭവിക്കുന്നത് മനുഷ്യർ തന്നെയാണ് അപ്പോൾ ആ ഒരു ഇതിൽ പൊളിറ്റിക്സും നന്നായിട്ട് കയറി വരാൻ സാധ്യതയുണ്ട് വയനാട് ആയതുകൊണ്ട് വയനാട്ടിലെ ഓരോ കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഇങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു ചോദ്യം വരുന്നത് അല്ല എനിക്ക് അറിയാം മുറുകൾ പറയുന്നത് എനിക്ക് മനസ്സിലായി പിന്നെ ഈ ഹ്യൂമൻ വൈൽഡ് ലൈഫ് കോൺഫ്ലിക്റ്റിൽ ഫോറസ്റ്റ് മിനിസ്റ്റർ തന്നെ ഡിസ്ട്രിക്റ്റിൽ വന്നിട്ട് സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് തരണം അല്ല നമുക്ക് മൃഗങ്ങളുടെ എണ്ണം കുറയ്ക്കണം എന്ന് പറയുകയാണ് വെച്ചാൽ അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു അറ്റ്മോസ്ഫിയർ ക്രിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്യണം പക്ഷെ അവിടെ നമുക്ക് നമ്മുടെ ഗ്രൗണ്ട് നിന്നേ നോർത്തിയുള്ളൂ നമുക്ക് നമുക്ക് എന്താ സയന്റിഫിക് ബേസിസ് എന്താണെന്ന് മനസ്സിലാക്കണം അപ്പൊ ആ സയന്റിഫിക് ബേസിസ് എന്താണെന്ന് മനസ്സിലാക്കുമ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ രണ്ടും രണ്ട് പൊസിഷനും നമ്മള് നമ്മള് എന്താ സയന്റിഫിക് ട്രൂത്ത് വെച്ചാൽ അത് നമ്മൾ അത് നമുക്ക് പറയാനുള്ള ധൈര്യം നമുക്ക് വേണം ചില സ്ഥലങ്ങളിൽ ചില സമയങ്ങളിൽ ഇപ്പൊ മൃഗങ്ങളെ മൃഗങ്ങളെ കള്ളിയണം എന്നുള്ളൊരു ഡെസിഷൻ ആണ് സയന്റിഫിക് റീസണിങ് ബിക്കോസ് ദ പോപ്പുലേഷൻ ഹാസ് ഗോൺ ബിയോണ്ട് കാരിയിങ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ആൻഡ് ചെൽ അത് പറയാനുള്ള ധൈര്യം നമുക്ക് വേണം നമ്മ നമ്മളെ പോലെ ജേർണലിസ്റ്റിന് അത് പറയാനുള്ള ധൈര്യവും വേണം പക്ഷെ അതല്ല ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ സിറ്റുവേഷൻ അതല്ല ഇപ്പൊ ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ സിറ്റുവേഷനിൽ മൃഗങ് മൃഗങ്ങളുടെ എണ്ണം കൂടിയിട്ടല്ല പ്രശ്നം ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ പ്രശ്നം ഈ ഹാബിറ്റാറ്റുകളിൽ നമ്മുടെ ഹ്യൂമൻ ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ് കൂടിയിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ ഓരോ തവണ വയനാട്ടിലേക്ക് വരുമ്പോഴും വയനാട്ടിൽ അധികമധികം ബിൽഡിങ്സ് വരണം അധികധികം റോഡ്സ് വരണം അപ്പോൾ അത് നമ്മൾ പറയാൻ ധൈര്യം കാണിച്ചേ പറ്റൂ അത് നമ്മൾ ധൈര്യം നമ്മളത് പറയണം അത് നമ്മൾ നമ്മളെ നമ്മളെ പോലുള്ള കുറച്ച് ആൾക്കാർ പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ടിരുന്നാലാണ് ആ ഒരു ആർഗ്യുമെന്റിന് സ്പേസ് ഉണ്ടാവുള്ളൂ സൊസൈറ്റിയിൽ നമ്മൾ അത് പറഞ്ഞില്ല വെച്ചാൽ ആ അതിന് ആ സ്പേസ് ഇല്ലാണ്ടാവും പിന്നെ കുറച്ച് കാലം കഴിയുമ്പോൾ ആരും ഈ ഒരു ഇഷ്യൂ സംസാരിക്കാതെ ആവും അപ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ നമ്മുടെ ഒരു ഒരു കടമയാണ് നമ്മുടെ ഒരു റെസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി ആണ് ഇത് പറയണം എന്നുള്ളത് probably will end with two questions uh, yes. one with sanur sujana and one more i'll take uh, yeah. the pleasure to ask you the last question and end it yeah.
So do you think that this can positively impact uh, in bringing down the aerosol and air pollution and thus have a good uh, impact on the climate? Thank you. Uh, so Jana, yeah, this is, this, is, uh, uh, this is an issue because, uh, uh, you know, tourism also goes from a, uh, from a perspective that, uh, I mean, there, I mean, just just as there is, there has to be equity on environment, there has to be equity on the enjoyment of, of environment, enjoyment of the ecosystem services that environment uh, gives, you know, good environment gives. So, so that 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 is the equity discussion. So now, what happens is, uh, you know, in 1970s, 1980s, uh, not everybody could travel to the Nilgiris because not everybody had. And one is the the number of cars being manufactured were were less, and the cars were so expensive compared to earning capacity of people that very few people could could uh, you know afford cars, you know. So, so less number of cars moved to the Nilgiris and very few number of people wanted to travel, wanted to experience the environment and, the, the, and very few people travel. So it had a bit of a uh, exclusivity about it. You know, I mean, it, 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 exclusively for the rich people, exclusively for the Maharajas before that to have their summer palace in the Nilgiris, in the top plat, in the top plateau, etc. But, you know, as, as, Things have passed uh, since, especially since the 1990s, and you know, uh, more and more people have become richer, and consumer goods have become uh, more freely available. More people can uh, can afford these goods. There, there are more aspirations of people, and they they want to travel to uh, places like the Nilgiris, and and you cannot deny that. I mean, you cannot deny them that because you know, just because their fathers, like my father, may not have. Uh, my father did not have a car. So, I mean, for him to drive to Nilgiris perhaps was not a possibility. But but because my father did not have a car and did not drive a car to the Nilgiris does not mean that I should be denied the right of wanting to travel to the Nilgiris to, to, to enjoy the environment of the Nilgiris. So, so that becomes the equity argument. Then how do you find the balance? Because this is also not, not only for me. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not just for my pleasure. Okay. Because when I travel to the Nilgiris, I am spending money, and that's that money is going back in some way or the other to to local population. Now you can you can look at the distribution theories and say you know some part much of the money goes back to the plane need not necessarily have impact on on the population of Nilgiris, but yes, it does lead to tourism does lead to local level economic impact now that that said now then how do you how do you regulate uh, uh, it in such a way that uh, you know you don't kill the the goose that lays the golden eggs you know you don't want to kill that so how do you how do you regulate tourism uh, to that uh, to that level i mean that becomes the question so then I mean, I, I, Nilgiris, has, I don't know whether Nilgiris ever thought about it, but there are other places which have done. I mean, which, which I mean, when you have a, when, when you have something, people going up to a particular uh, height or something, then, then you see your, your, you have to park your vehicles below. And then there, there would be enough reliable, you know, electric or whatever transportation going up. Uh, uh, so you take those and go up. I mean, places with lesser number of footfalls have tried this and worked on them uh, successfully. So I, I do not know what would be the model for Nilgiris. I mean, because more thoughts, I mean, more thoughts would need to go into it. But some way in which you, you manage the, the crowd that goes up, I mean, what is, it's, it's, not, it's not the, I mean, when people, walk, people take a train or a bus to Nilgiris, their impact is X. I mean, if they take drive their car, then the impact is Y. What you're trying to reduce is not telling people not to come to Nilgiris because that you have no right to say, but uh, saying that at least try and reduce this the difference between X and Y. You know, you 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 try and take some kind of group transport up to the Nilgiris. For that, you have to provide group transport which is reliable, which has very less impact on the environment, etc. So, so this 
if if the administration wants if it's serious it can work on models and and see i mean and then improve on it you know but for that administration has to be serious about it and people also have to agree to it and uh, local people also have to agree to it and then uh, can be worked upon there are enough and more locations where uh, i mean ecologically sensitive locations where access to the ecologically sensitive location is uh, through organized collective community transport no, not not you know everybody driving their vehicles up and down so it can be thought of it can be worked upon whether people would work 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 upon that we do not know and but for that to happen at least to start with that the impact of environmental impact of aerosols or you know vehicular emissions on the on 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 the uh, you know environment of nil grease has to be studied and that has to be communicated properly thank you sir thank you for the insight yeah We'll end with this question. Uh, it's a very uh, general question because um, it was interesting to see that your first article on Ingris, I mean, like it was in 98, and now it's 25 years somewhere. Um, so my question is, how do you see the change in style of reporting, especially on um, environmental journalism? Because you also like touched upon equity, inclusivity, etc. Et so how do you see that change across, you know, in the media in 25 years span? Yeah, actually, my, my first article on Ilgris dates back even before, I didn't show that, but dates back even before I, I even became a journalist, you know, so one, my first, first byline in basically the school, school newsletter was on, on the Silent Valley issue in 1980, so uh, it, and that Silent Valley, you know, is a Ilgris, so, so it dates back to even, even then, but to answer your question, I think I need to talk only from the professional point of view. So uh, from professional point of view, basically, uh, environment journalism has, has changed a lot in the, uh, how many years? We are talking of 1990s onwards. So uh, uh, 90s, uh, the first, uh, so two, uh, 30 years, you know, 30, 32 years that uh, uh, of, uh, from from economic liberalization, so so essentially that period I can I can cover because I've lived through that period, I worked through that period, lived and worked through that period. So uh, that and that period, uh, there are more. I mean, today there are far more environment journalism as as a profession, as as uh, as a place for young people to be, as an aspirational career option for young people. I mean, these have all grown. You know, it's, it's 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 an optimistic world for for an aspiring environment journalist today, as it was uh, compared to my time. You know, my time when 1990s, when I was trying to write environment in uh, in a business newspaper. You know, it it was like oh, I was like this is a mad fellow who's 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 anti development kind of a uh, you're you're neglected even in your own. Uh, in, in your own organization kind of. So today that's not the case. I mean, partially it's because, uh, you know, awareness has, has increased on environment uh, for people. So, um, uh, you know, people want to look, read environment stories. So if they want to read environment stories. They have to be more environment journalists who will write these stories. And, and more and more, uh, I mean, almost all, uh, journalism courses today provide you some opportunity or the other to do environment journalism. So, so your avenues are not limited. And every publication or every television channel, every online publication, even you know your social media channels, uh, they all have scope for environment stories. So they all have scope for environment reporters, environment journalists, environment editors, etc. So, so there is there is there is a far increased uh, you know opportunity and far increased uh, avenues for training but the biggest and and this is now going to become more and more in the decades to come but the biggest motivator uh, which has led to strengthening of environment journalism has not been 
any of this, you know, because these these are all there. But the biggest motivator has been because of environment has started hitting back. As you you do see every time there's there's a rain of 150 millimeters of rainfall in the Neil Grease, you will see reports about uh, you know landslides, about parts of villages being washed out, bridges getting washed out, agriculture fields getting washed out, some people dying, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it's not as if you didn't have that kind of, you know, 150 millimeters of rain previously. No, you did have, uh, you, you did have 150 millimeters of rainfall even previously, but but you hadn't tampered with the environment so much that it had, you had made it more fragile. So you have, the, the vulnerability has increased, you've made the environment more fragile and, and you have impacts seen. So, so that that has added the biggest feedback loop. I mean, like take any city, for instance, I mean, like Chennai. I mean, Chennai, Chennai is a city which, 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 which has low lying areas. So every time there's rain, there would be water logging. There would be some kind of flooding. That's been there. But when you have some kind of big rains in 2015, Chennai floods beyond, beyond, and that once you, once the population of Chennai has gone through the 2015 floods, or the population of Kerala has gone through the 2018 floods, then when you talk about environment, they understand it much better than before that, you know, or they also want to, they also have experienced the feedback loop, so they they will they they would want to raise raise issues back to. Uh, back to you, you know, saying, why aren't you covering this? And that is where the feedback loop for, you know, young young journalists like Umarul and, uh, uh, you know, and uh, Sumaya will come, you know, where where there would be people uh, who who would say, yes, I mean, it's 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 silly to say that man-animal animal conflict in Vayanad is happening because there are too many tigers. I mean, somebody, I mean, sure, there would be enough people who will come and come to, I mean, they may not be the they may not be politicians, they may not be powerful people, but there would be enough sensible people in Vayanad who would say it's not, it's not that, not that the tigers have, tiger numbers have increased so much that it's difficult for you to walk uh, in Vayanad any longer. I mean, tigers were always there, but it's just that we have got, we have, dis, we have disturbed the tiger habitat so badly that tigers are coming more in conflict. So there would be people who would support your in a voice of reason, so so that will in, increase. So that is that is already happening. So, in short, over the period of uh, you know 30, 40 years that I can talk about working experience, uh, the avenues for environment journalists has increased, and these avenues for environment journalists to express themselves is only going to increase in the future because we are going to have more and more of extreme weather events. We are going to see more and more impact of climate change. We are going to see more and more adverse impact of biodiversity loss. So it's only going to increase. So, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's something very ironic to say, but as the environment is deteriorating, there would be more scope for environment journalism. Thanks for that response, sir. Well, again, thanks a lot for your valuable time. And it was a very interactive session. Um, and we'd have, I mean, like, please make time to visit us uh, anytime in future. We'd look forward to it. Uh, so thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavya. Thank you very much, Aarti, also to suggest my name. And it's a real pleasure, as I said, and an honor to be part of this young group. And I hope 10 years down the line, I meet any of you and you are you're all established journalists and you come and tell me, oh, I remember you from 10 years ago. I would be very, very happy if you were to follow this path. All the best. Best wishes to all of you.